From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us on your MTN statewide news this Friday. I'm Janelle Slade. Well, today again, difficult news in Montana's fight against coronavirus. Three more deaths, one in Ravalli County and two more at a Billings Long Term Care Center. This as the state reaches a new record of active confirmed cases today. Health officials today report 127 new cases. 54 of those are in Yellowstone County. Gallatin County follows with 39 new cases. So the total active cases across the state is now at 663 and 28 people have died. Well, the two most recent deaths tied to the COVID-19 outbreak at Canyon Creek Memory Care in Billings. The latest two victims, a man in his 80s and a man in his 90s. Now, these men bring the week's total deaths at the facility to five. Overall, 66 residents and employees tested positive for COVID-19 at the facility. 32 residents and staff tested negative, and Canyon Creek is waiting now for results on 16 more tests. A spokesperson for Canyon Creek says, We were following all guidelines from the state and federal government. Everything the CDC put out on all protocols. We're not entirely sure of the source yet. We're trying to determine what may have caused it. Well, Yeltsin County has surpassed Gallatin County in confirmed cases at 431 and nine deaths. Gallatin County with about 25 fewer cases and one death. And also in Yellowstone County, two employees at two different state health offices in Billings have tested positive. The positive cases came from the Office of Public Assistance and Child and Family Services Division. Now the state says both are on 14 day home isolation and working with Riverstone Health on contact tracing. Well, COVID-19 testing sites are up and running this weekend all across Montana. So check in with your local county health department for dates, times and locations. Well, Missoula County is now the second Montana County to mandate wearing face masks in all indoor public places effective immediately. MTN's Megan Mannering has reaction. Across the board, from an education perspective to the economic standpoint, Missoula's leaders shared overwhelming support for the health department's newest mandate, requiring masks to be worn in indoor public spaces. This is a common sense step forward uh, during a time when this virus is on the rise, not on the wane. Local leaders say this requirement is our best shot at economic recovery. We've realized that it's untenable to remain as we are right now. It's also untenable to have our economy completely closed down. So this, to my mind, is our first best crack at coming up with a way to be open and safe. And enforcing this mandate? Well, that's up to our local businesses. With fear of facing repercussions, businesses across Missoula have a newfound responsibility to ensure their customers are complying. For at least two popular downtown businesses, they say the requirement is the best thing to do. But that's not to say they won't be facing any hiccups as they try to keep their customers covered up. With, with us, when, when somebody's having a beverage of their choice, um, they're going to have to take their mask off. I am worried a little bit about that, uh, that we might lose some business with people that don't want to wear masks. In what's already a challenging time for small businesses, owners hope to see their customers cooperating. We are not going to be mask police, um, but we are behind anything that's going to help our community to make sure that the, the virus does not spread. Anything we can do as business owners and people in the community to keep the small businesses open is a positive, not only just for the businesses, but just for Montana in general. In Missoula, Megan Mannering, MTN News. Thanks, Megan. Now, along with Missoula, Bighorn County in southern Montana has also mandated the use of masks. However, the county attorney there questions whether the order is legally enforceable. Well, I know I've been wearing my mask and Rob Griggs walked in today <laughs> yeah. with his mask on. And you know what? Also some good news today. Oh, I sure did. Just learned this a little bit ago. It is National Kitten Day. Oh, National Kitten Day and National Motorcycle Day. Oh, my goodness. It's like my world is all coming together finally. <laughs> Well, happy to those two things. First, I got to wish a very happy birthday to my friend Bob Kasuba in Roundup, Montana. Bob's going to be turning 77 on Sunday. 
Happy birthday, Bob, and all you folks in Roundup, give him a shout out. Just a real quick look at what the 6 to 10 day outlook is calling for. Cooler than average temperatures across the Pacific Northwest, warmer than average everywhere else, so we're kind of getting a break there. And then, of course, we're also leaning wetter, and most of this is going to start Sunday night through Monday for the rest of the work week statewide. We'll have the complete statewide forecast in just a bit, Janelle. All right, thanks, Rob. Now, the pandemic will also mean changes in the way fires are fought across Montana. Firefighters will camp in smaller groups and interactions with others will be limited. Even food preparation will take on a new look. In the past, a concessions trailer would set up and firefighters would wait in long lines to be served. Now, meals will be prepackaged to avoid gatherings. All of these changes are a backdrop to what officials fear could be an above average fire season across our state. The bottom line, as we go into late summer and early fall, things always dry out. They just could be worse this year. And if we get the right weather conditions like we had Tuesday or from the monsoon or just that normal heating and instability, we could have a lot of lightning starts this year. And some other new items, community briefings will take place online rather than in person. Now, the BLM is currently adding new technology and training information officers, so they'll be able to keep up and keep the public informed virtually. Well, Glacier National Park is looking to make some changes for those coming in through the west entrance. Park officials may require visitors to get advanced registration tickets. Officials say traffic congestion has been difficult to manage. Coronavirus shut down the east side of the park, which means visitors are flocking to the west entrance. Registration to get in would have to be made 30 days in advance and the gates would be open from 6 to 6. Well, a Billings judge strikes down a Montana law restricting how mail-in ballots can be gathered. The decision sides with a coalition of Native American advocacy groups. They argue the rule passed by voters in 2018 suppresses Native voters. A preliminary injunction won't actually bring a lawsuit filed by the Native groups to a definitive end, but does indicate the judge believes the groups are likely to win their case. It keeps state government from enforcing the Ballot Interference Prevention Act while the litigation is pending. Well, the man charged with tearing a Ten Commandments statue out of the ground in front of the Flathead County Courthouse says he's not guilty. Anthony Weimer of Columbia Falls was released on his own recognizance and charged with felony criminal mischief. He could face up to 10 years in prison and a $50,000 fine. Weimer's jury trial is set for October 19th. Authorities say he wrapped chains around the monument, then dragged it into the middle of the street behind his pickup truck. Officials say he hasn't been linked to any local protest groups. Well, the Supreme Court is blocking Congress from getting President Trump's financial records. However, a second ruling didn't work out in favor of the president. At issue, first, whether or not the president can prevent the Democratic-led House from obtaining his financial records. The court sent that back to a lower court, which likely means the records will be hidden from Congress until after the November election. But in a second decision, the court unanimously ruled the president can be subpoenaed by a New York prosecutor who also wants to view his financial returns. But those will also likely remain secret as part of a grand jury investigation. Ahead on your new news, during your next shopping spree, you could soon be seeing signs posted asking you for exact change. We'll find out why. It's now 12.08 and Rob Griggs is in next with your weather. Local rascal started way out here in Idaho early this morning and blew through Missoula, brought a lot of thunder and lightning and some small hail and gusty winds, and it continued to grow and brought rain showers even as far as Billings and now continues to move out of the state and region, still cruising through northeast Montana. We'll also see some thunderstorms develop out here in the eastern portion of the state. And the winds right now have picked up a little bit. You know, you've got your gusts up to 23 miles an hour there at Sheridan, also some 29 mile an hour wind gusts at Great Falls, but now really this isn't too bad at all. It's a nice Nice, uh, lightly breezy afternoon starting out here for us. And of course, this line of thunderstorms and rain showers will probably pick up a little bit of steam. There is the potential out here for strong to severe thunderstorms, as you can see on the map right now. Uh, this uh, cold front that's passing through right now is beginning to weaken, but not before it moves into the plains of North and South Dakota and Nebraska and really could create a lot of problems. I know the folks in Bismarck will be keeping a close eye on that. Meanwhile, down here in Wyoming, you see all the red returns on the map. That's fire weather danger. 
You know, the wind combination is as dry as it's been right now, and with a warming trend headed in for the weekend, that could be a bad combination, especially if we're not careful out there while we're recreating. Uh, the good news for us, if you've been waiting for a couple of nice, warm, sunny days going into the weekend, most of Montana, most of Wyoming, as we head into tomorrow, we'll see a warmer, drier day. And again, we have to be careful with outdoors because we have some dry conditions out there, but we'll have a nice little sun break that's just good for the weekend, sort of a two day pass for Saturday and Sunday. And uh, then as we advance this map onto Sunday evening, you start to see the advancing of a cold front that begins across western Montana. And behind that will be a, another draw of moisture as well as some cooler temperatures. We're actually going to see a cooling trend over several days as we step into the better part of next week for the work week. Meanwhile, the warmer temperatures will spread east and move into the plains. Uh, so uh, folks out in eastern Montana will enjoy hot weather all the way into Sunday evening, probably well into the low 90s at many locations out there in eastern Montana. So that's the story as we're heading into the weekend. What about today? Well, again, the main area of concern right now, we have a marginal to a slight risk of strong to severe weather out in eastern Montana moving into the Dakotas. Glendive and Miles City both hitting 83 degrees. Meanwhile, we will see some scattered sporadic showers and thunderstorms across central, western, southwestern Montana. Also, at times, there'll be some northwesterly winds, which is going to keep the temperatures cool, at least cooler than average at most of our reporting stations. We'll still see 80 degrees in Missoula, 76 degrees at Kalispell, and uh, those showers will be clearing up later on tonight. And as we move into tonight, as a matter of fact, we start to see those skies clear. And look at these temperatures getting real comfortable for us down to the 40s and 50s. And again, pretty much a dry situation as we head into midnight and into the early morning hours. And by the time we roll into tomorrow, well, you can see for yourself, we've got temperatures into the 80s and low 90s. And of course, these warmer temperatures will start to advance for us as we head into Sunday. Be very common for many of these locations across the plains of central and eastern Montana, southeast Montana, to be well into the 90s as we hit Sunday. So we are uh, setting up really nicely for a beautiful weekend, and a little bit later on in the cast, we'll give you that extended forecast. But for now, that's a quick look at your weather. Janelle? All right, thanks so much, Rob. Well, nearly half of families in the U.S. have seen a cut in their income since the coronavirus pandemic began. According to Bankrate, 49% of households have either been impacted by layoffs, furloughs, or a reduction in hours. Nearly the same amount of people are optimistic and believe their income will return to normal within six months. Just 4% believe their income will never recover. If the list of problems caused by the coronavirus pandemic wasn't long enough, here's one more. There is a shortage of coins in different parts of the country. Nancy Chen explains why. For you today. Getting change at the store may be difficult these days. Quick Trip is one of many businesses experiencing a shortage of coins. There are signs posted asking customers for exact change. And if they don't have it, any money back will be in the form of a gift card. It's not an isolated problem. Across the country, companies are warning customers they're low on change. The COVID pandemic is the reason why. When retail stores were forced to shut down, the U.S. circulation of coins slowed down dramatically. At the same time, the U.S. Mint had to cut production of new coins because of staffing changes to keep workers safe. The Federal Reserve then put limits on how much change banks would be given. Now that stores are back open, many can't get enough coins from banks and are asking consumers for help. Just saw the sign in the door of the quick trip that they needed coins. So rather than take them to the bank, we just brought them in here. Quick Trip says customer contributions have eased the problem, but elsewhere shortages continue. A 7-Eleven in Michigan offered shoppers with $5 in coins, cash, and a free Slurpee. Banks are also asking the public to open up their piggy banks. If you have large amounts of coin at home, take them to your bank and have them run. Uh, so, and then just get the cash. You still have the same amount of money and we have coins to circulate out. The U.S. Mint has been able to ramp up production to 1.5 billion coins a month. The Federal Reserve expects the shortages to ease as the economy opens up more. But it's not clear when that will be. Nancy Chen, CBS News, New York. Every penny counts. Up next, your latest ag news with Lane Nordland. We'll be right back. Report from the Montana Ag Network. Welcome back for today's farm and ranch news. Farmers are planting less wheat in the U.S. and that's been a gradual trend over recent decades. 
The all wheat planted area for 2020 is estimated at 44.3 million acres. Now that's down 2% from 2019 and the lowest all wheat planted area since records began in 1919. USDA research economist Jennifer Bond gives more insight on the trend. It's not just one thing, but certainly the combination of weak prices and probably also limited genetic improvement as well as enhanced planting flexibility for farmers. Although plantings of wheat are lower over time in the U.S., Bond explained what has gone up has been production and yield in that same time period. We've had some record high yields in recent times. That's in part due to favorable weather, but also perhaps some improvements in seeds and varieties of seeds being used. Perhaps farmers are being encouraged to not save their seed as much from year to year, but perhaps refresh with seed from seed dealers. That's not always been a feature of wheat markets, even though that's something that's quite common in corn and soybean production. Montana winter wheat producers planted over 1.5 million acres, down from 2 million acres planted for the previous year's crop, while spring wheat seedings were up 100,000 acres at 3 million acres. On the trade front, President Donald Trump and Mexican President Andres Manuel Lopez Arbador met in Washington, D.C. this week to celebrate the U.S.-Mexico-Canada Free Trade Agreement. The agreement recently became the law of the land here in North America. The U.S. and Mexican president signed a joint declaration commemorating the July 1st entry into force of the USMCA. During remarks to reporters, Herbador lamented that North America's regional trade deficit with the rest of the world, which he says totals $611 billion, he hopes that the USMCA will help North America capture a bigger share of the world economic output. The statistic reflects China's rising share of world economic growth over the past half century. USMCA is expected to boost U.S. ag exports by $2 billion. We'll be right back. Today, more bearish news for U.S. wheat producers as the latest World Egg Supply and Demand Estimates report pegs U.S. wheat supplies by raising them as larger beginning stocks more than offset lower production. This also resulted in lowering the 2019-20 feed and residual use by 61 million bushels to 74 million. Wheat production in the U.S. is reduced by 53 million bushels to 1,824 million. Projected exports are unchanged at 950 million this month. Ending stocks are projected at 17 million bushels higher than last month at 942 million. Internationally now, the 2020 through 21 global wheat outlook is for smaller supplies, reduced consumption, lower exports, and decreased stocks. Supplies are reduced by 2.9 million tons to 1,066 million, as larger beginning stocks are more than offset by reduced production, primarily in the EU, US, Morocco, and Russia. That's today's Farm and Ranch News. Now here's something for you. If you're thinking about a lunchtime dessert, Heinz Ketchup launched do-it-yourself ice cream kits. It's true, in Britain. Flavor options include ketchup, mayonnaise, barbecue sauce, and salad cream. I'm gonna guess that's sour cream. Okay. Flavored cold treats coincide with National Ice Cream Month in the UK. Heinz does not plan to sell the kits in the US, Gee, and, and England has such a bad rap for having lousy food. I wonder why that is. Wow, ketchup yeah. ice cream. Okay, yeah, no, nope, not going to do it. Mm -mm. Not even going to think about it long enough to want to do it. No, it's not even going to be hot enough to have mm -mm. ketchup ice cream. Nope. Now, it might be hot enough if you're, you know, in Missoula on Saturday for 91. I don't know of anybody in Missoula that will try that, though. Uh, Great Falls and Helena, you notice that cold front starting to edge in a little bit later. Uh, Monday it will be the day when it starts to cool down. Of course, Bozeman and Butte, the further that we head, uh, the cooler it gets uh, by Monday. And, of course, Glendive and Billings, hot day on Sunday. So get ready for that. All right. Thanks so much, Rob. Have a great weekend, everyone. We will see you next week.